Hey, good morning to everybody. We know that today is uh, Father's Day, so I want to wish all the fathers a God blessed day. May you be spoiled just for this day. Amen. This morning I want to talk about what is Jesus to us? You know, maybe today you find yourself at your wit's end. Maybe you've been under pressure for a long time. Maybe you've been under the onslaught of the devil for, for, for so long that you begin to ask yourself questions. But to, today I want, I want to bring you two main scriptures. And I want to encourage you with the scriptures. Now look at Acts 17, verse 28. Acts 17, verse 28. It says here, For in Him, this is Jesus, we live, we move, and have our being. A certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. The writer of the book of Acts is trying to bring something across by saying, don't lose courage. Don't lose courage. Because we are the offsprings of God. We are children of God. The Bible says, those who are filled with the Spirit, they are called children of God. So this morning, if you are a believer in Jesus, the Christ of God, who died on the cross, who went to the grave and was resurrected, and you've been born again by the Spirit of the living God, then you are children of the living God. And as children of the living God, you need to know that we live, we move, and have our being in Him. And yes, at times, we get over, almost overtaken by confusion I mean if you look at this world global pandemic how many people have been confused and still are where does this pandemic come from there are many theories there are many uh, conspiracies and although some may be true I don't believe all of them are true but what we do know for a certainty, out of Scripture, not out of what we think, who did what, out of Scripture, we know that the devil is the author of this. Now we know that he has to use man to bring evil. And in the book of John 10.10, 10, we have read it so many times and we need to read it like every day, every day, every day, so that we can have that assurance inside of us that the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Now have a look, have a look at what happens with this pandemic throughout the globe. Have a look at it. Does it fall under the, those three categories? Theft, killing, destruction. Does this pandemic, how can I say, uh, is, is, is like demonstrating theft, killing and destruction? Yes. Yes. How many people have died? How many more must die before we realize, listen, we are at war. We do not fight against flesh and blood. Now I know many people are pointing fingers to Many certain peoples from the 
all over the, the world and this guy is guilty and this this person are guilty and they man yes 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 men it's a man man may think but the behind the spirit behind that is the spirit of the devil that's what Paul says we do not fight against flesh and blood you might imprison this one man the moment you imprison this one another one will be raised See, Jesus says you need to bind the strong man first. And a lot of times we are missing, missing our prayer lines. We're missing our prayer goals, our prayer aim, because we are not aware of what we should pray for, who should we pray for, what should we should pray against. Paul says we do not war against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers of darkness, against the princes of the air. You see, our war, our warfare is not carnal. It's not a physical war. Yes, men fight against each other, but the spirit behind that, that's what we're fighting against as Christians in prayer. And when we fight against the flesh this is where things around us gets us confused this is where questions arises in our spirit and of course the devil will come of course the devil will come and he'll say things like Hey, if you're a child of God, how come you are such in a mess? If you're a child of God, why doesn't God manifest Himself right now? Why are so many people dying? Where is your God? Why hasn't He moved yet? These are all lies that the devil is pumping into you daily. He never, he never stops. He bombards you with his thoughts. And then when, when we start acting on this thought that has been really bombarded from all sides, I mean, you've got that on the, on, on, on the internet, you get that on every media possible. And they're pointing fingers at this person and that person and this person, and we are fixating against, although guilty parties, not the root of the problem. It's not the root of the root of the problem is the evil behind this. And this is where our warfare, Paul says, should be. That's why God says, wear the armor of God. You have the word of God, you have the blood of Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit, you have the armor of God to fight the enemy. How did Jesus rebuke the devil? He said, It is written. It is written. Well, it is written for us in Him. This is Jesus. In Him we move and have our being. We live and we move. We have our being in Jesus. Don't forget that. We go through all kinds of trials and tribulations and testings and we go through wilderness experiences. But what sustains us, what makes us to Carry on. What makes us go the extra mile is the assurance that Jesus is Lord of our lives. That's what, that's what the devil is fighting against. The devil couldn't care less who you accuse, who you think is uh, guilty of this pandemic. Is it, is it China? Is it the US? Is it this guy? Is it this guy? He couldn't kill as long as you fight men, as long as you fight flesh, he's not concerned. Because if you don't, if you're fighting flesh, you're not fighting the spirit behind it, and that's him. He doesn't want you to be in war with him. He, he puts lies across. The writer of the book of Acts says, says to us, for in him in him, in Jesus. We live, we move, and have our being. 
the assurance, the assurance of, 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 of our faith. All this going around this, this world right now as is aimed at the faith of believers. This is, look around you. Look around you. Pandemic has killed more faith than people. I've posted it on Facebook. I spoke to people about it. And the majority agree. Those who don't agree, that's okay. That's your opinion. But have a look. Have a look. I mean, I can see in the church. I take my own church, for example. We had to close the church in 2020 when the pandemic really hit the globe. Uh, the, we went into like we call it phase one, and or everything was closed. Shops, businesses, every churches, everything was on the lockdown, and it stayed like this for a few months. And automatically, us as leaders, as preachers, as teachers, and and praise God, there are many like, like many many around that quickly use the media to bring encouragement to the church, to the people who, because we were all locked down in our houses. But the, the word that came across last year is to make the people realize that the, the building that you are gathering it every Sunday or every day that you celebrate your Sabbath is not the church. You are the church. You are the Ecclesia of God. And that was the message of 2020. Don't lose hope. Don't lose courage. You are the Ecclesia. And people did not see this. And when, praise God, the, the church reopened, half of the people were gone. Not gone like uh, away. They were just gone from the, from the church. They stayed away. And Many people, and it's un understandable. Please don't, don't, don't. I'm not taking this lightly. It is understandable that peer people were fearful. Now we need to be careful. We need to be safe. We need to operate with safety measures that the the government has put in place, like taking your temperatures and and wearing your mask and shield and and, and sanitizers and everything. Praise God! And we we need to do this. We need to stay to keep our distances and everything. But what, one thing that we do not need to do is live in fear. Because the Bible says that the righteous shall live by faith. We are not ignorant of what's going on outside there. We are not ignorant of this. We are well aware of it. But we can refuse to fear. And when I say refuse to fear, it's not being silly, going out there and not wearing masks and not doing anything. Ah, oh, I don't care about it. No, 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 no. We are obeying the laws of the land, but we will not operate in, in fear. That means our decision will not be based on fear. Our way of, things will, of doing things will not be based on fear, but be based by faith. Why? Because Jesus is Lord. And, and through Him, we live and we have our being. This is what the, the writer writes here. And I've seen many people are getting offended when told, don't live in fear. Because a lot of people die in car accidents. I mean, here in South Africa, it's an amazing number, or I would say a terrible number of people die on the road. We just heard, I think yesterday or the day before, a drunk driver killed one of a, of a, a small child. The two, sis, two, two little sisters were working from school, and he just swerved, drunk, driving car, he swerved and rode over one, and she, she's killed, she died. Now, this will not, you still carry on riding your car 
knowing this fact, but you are not fearful riding your car. You are indeed more careful riding your car. You're more you 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 get an awareness how you drive your car, what goes on around you. There's a greater awareness, not fear. If it was fear, you wouldn't touch your car. This pandemic is the same thing. There must be a greater awareness of the way we do things, but we will not operate in fear. We should not, never, never, never submit to fear. We should never, ever, ever, never, ever surrender to fear. Because the Bible says we've been given a spirit of power not to fear again. And unfortunately, people's faith has been dented, if I may use that word. This pandemic came like a car crash and just ran into the people's faith and it crumbled down. Bible urges us to wake up unto righteousness. You know that Fear is not of God. Do you understand that in the Bible, in the whole of the Bible, it says, fear not. Jesus said it hundreds of times in the New Testament. Fear not. Do not be afraid. And if, it, if that, that command comes from Jesus, not from man, not from me, not from any other pastors or teachers or whatever, it comes from Jesus saying, fear not. That means, understand God's word. Understand this God's word. That when God says something, that means we have the potential to do what God says we should do. So if Jesus says, fear not, that means we have the potential. We've been created, made by God, that we don't have to fear. That, that means that if God issues a... A command if God issues a mandate to us that means that I've got the ability in myself because I was created by God he knows how I, I, I operate he knows what I'm capable of he knows how far I can get I can get pushed he knows how far I can do things he knows how far I can say things and therefore God will issue a mandate he will issue a command and he will tell us fear not that means I've got the possibility and I've got the potential not to fear you see God is not unreasonable he's not he, when he says something that means he's actually telling us hey guys Hey people, my children, I've put a spirit of power within you. I've got a, you've got the spirit of God within you that cries, Abba, Father. It's not a spirit that will make you fear. It's a spirit of power that will make you overcome fear. So we are aware of things. But we will not surrender to fear. Put your feet down. Put your foot down. Say, I do will not surrender to fear. But then, don't just say, us, I'm not surrendering to fear and do nothing about it. Get, get the Bible and start reading. Get the Word of God. Read it. Read it. Meditate on it day and night. This is a command that God issues to Joshua when Moses died and Joshua threw himself down on the, on the ground uh, having a pity party. God then go to him, to him and say, Oh, shame. Oh, poor Joshua. Oh, they are pat on the back. No, no, he says, Get up. What are you doing on the, on the ground? Get up. And, he, but, and then Joshua got up and thinking, Okay, what now? And God says, Meditate on my word day and night and you'll make your way successful. Have I not told you, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. Now, but that was, a, no, 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 no. The New Testament says, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. As, as I was with Jesus, I will be with you as well. The disciples experienced that when Jesus was gone, they went into all the provinces and they preached the word. The Bible says they turned the world upside down. 
And the Bible says that God was with them performing miracles and, and healing people and delivering people and doing all the things that God had mandated them to do. So, within you right now, yes, you might have heard the devil whispering in your ear. Did God tell you he will not forsake you? Where is he now? Why so many people dying? Where's your God? Where's the God that you believe in now? Ignore that. Read the word. Read the word. But I'm a, Pastor, how am I going to get out of my situation? Oh, let me think. Read the word. Oh, Pastor, how am I going to get over this, uh, this obstacle? Oh, read the word. That's what God said to Joshua. And that's what Jesus told his disciples. Abide in my words. And then he went away and he says, I will send you the Holy Spirit. And then when we see the ministry of the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, when he comes, he will bring in remembrance of things that I've said. So in other words, you, uh, you, can, you cannot escape that. Read the word. Read the word. Day and night. Read the word. Get those scriptures inside of you. When the devil comes, he says, and you can repeat the words of Jesus. It is written. Bible says resist the devil. How do you resist him? By knowing what the word says about yourself. About, uh, about the things that God can do through you. About the things that God wants to do through you. That's, that's why you read the word. This is, a, this is a word. This is a character of God in scripture. This is a description of Jesus within scripture. This very word, this very Bible is God's word to you. It's his testament. Every word in the Bible from the book of Genesis to Revelation describes Jesus, the Son of God. So how am I going to know God? By reading the word. How am I going to know Jesus? By reading the word. How am I going to know the Holy Spirit? By reading the word. <coughs> Sorry. Let's take heed to Scripture. Let's take heed to Scripture. Let's take this word seriously. You know what? Because God took that seriously enough that He sent His Son to the cross. Now that's serious. That's serious. He sent His own Son. He said He, sent, he, he gave His own Son. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That's mighty serious. How about we do God a favor and take His word seriously? How about that? How about we tell God, you know, Lord, you told over 200 times in the New Testament, fear not. And I'm making a decision this morning or this day or whenever you are Taking this word seriously. Whenever you see this video. And you make that decision. I will not fear. But I will walk and live by faith. Why? Because Jesus is Lord. And he lives in me. And he moves in me. And in him I've got my being. Make a quality decision. Make that quality decision. Decide now. I will not fear. And people say, why don't you fear? Smile. I tell them, Jesus is Lord. May you be blessed. May you overcome your fear with faith this morning. May you just go, go on your knees and say, Lord, I rebuke fear in my life right now. And I'm going to live by faith. Lord, you speak and I'll do it. In the name of Jesus. And in, throughout your life, remember, Jesus is Lord. Shalom.